Hello grade sevens and happy Friday. You're here with me today doing some problem solving. So on Friday, sometimes we'll be playing math games, sometimes we'll be doing a problem solving question. Today we're gonna to start with going so over some problem solving tactics, some ideas to give you that won't only help you with this question, but will help you hopefully with questions that you see in your math careers moving forward. So starting with, you have a problem solving question that's already posted there on Google Classroom, but thank you for watching this video first before going to that question, because I wanted to go over with you one thing that I've always remembered from school before, and that is kind of the three, to me they've always sounded like the three R's even though one's not an R. So that is read, write, and resolve. So that is what I've written on the board here, problem solving, read, write, resolve. It's always kind of stuck in my head, and I use it every time I have kind of a question that I need to solve in math. So that being said, first thing we need to do is read the question. So you have your question in front of you, make sure you've read the question. I'll read it through with you here right now. So a parking lot permits either cars or motorcycles. All, all together, the vehicles parked in this parking lot have 60 wheels. Use your reasoning and problem solving skills to find patterns and formulate an answer to how many different combinations of cars and motorcycles there could be in this parking lot. So right away you think to yourselves, okay, where's the question in that question? There's a lot of words. There's things that say, okay, there's 60 wheels. Uh, we're talking about a parking lot, but once again, what's the actual question? What is, what is this teacher asking me? What is this textbook asking me? What am I trying to solve? So that's where we need to go through. We need to write some things down. So what I've done on the other side of the board here, we've written some things down. So first off, the first thing you saw in that question is that you have a parking lot with 60 wheels. So it's not 60 cars, there's a parking lot with 60 wheels in it. Second part, we know through our own skills, we already know that okay, cars have four wheels, motorcycles have two wheels. That's not in the question, but we can kind of, we just, we know that. So that's something that the question kind of expects us to already have and to kind of already know. So moving from there, in the question, I'll read the part, the kind of last line, it says, use your reasoning and problem solving skills to find patterns and formulate an answer to how many different combinations and cars and motorcycles there could be in a parking lot. So the question there really is, how many different combinations of cars and motorcycles there could be in the parking lot? So that's what I wrote down. And this is what I kind of want you writing down there for yourselves is that you have kind of what is your header, what is kind of the bulk of the question, and what is the question really asking you? So once again, ask yourselves, how many different combinations of motorcycles and or vehicles can there be? So now when you kind of actually have to start the work. And what I would do if I were you, I would set up something that might look like this. And this is your resolve part. So after we've read, we've written some things down, you're now gonna start by writing, or sorry, you're now gonna to start to resolve. So what I would start with writing is that maybe I have a motorcycles versus my car. So I'll start with an example for you. If I had, let's say, zero motorcycles, well, how many wheels do I have? If I have zero motorcycles, I have zero wheels. Great. Well, how many cars am I gonna have if I have zero and zero here? How many cars do I need to make up 60? That's the part that we've gotta figure out. So what are we gonna to do to do that? Well, if I have, let's say, I need to have 60 wheels, Okay, delete that. Okay, so I flipped the board here. I erased our read, our write, our resolve because we're on to our resolve part. Now what I need to do is figure out, okay, what am I gonna do now to actually resolve this question? And in problem solving, this is the part where you need to figure out what way is gonna be best for me to answer this. Maybe it's create a chart. Maybe it's create a diagram. Maybe if we're trying to compare things, maybe it's a Venn diagram. But for this one right here, seeing we only have two things, we have cars versus motorcycles, I'm just gonna create a, a chart so that I know if I have this many cars, I'll have this many wheels, 
So therefore, I can have this many motorcycles and this many wheels. So I can kind of create a chart that will hopefully then give me some numbers and through those numbers, I can hopefully start to see a pattern. So starting, I'll do kind of one example with you guys here. So if in my parking lot, I know the total, again, I'm gonna put this in the corner just so I never forget, there has to be 60 wheels. So please, please, please don't forget that there has to be in this parking lot 60 wheels. So at the start, I have, let's say, I look in this parking lot, there is zero cars. Well, if there's zero cars, there's zero wheels. So therefore, how many motorcycles and wheels are there gonna be to fill the full 60? So I need there, I know there needs to be 60 wheels. So therefore, how many motorcycles? Well, on that last kind of side, we said that a motorcycle has two wheels, so 60 divided by two gives us 30 motorcycles. So there's the start to my chart. If I have zero cars, I have 30 motorcycles. There would be one kind of solution. That would kind of be one example, one possible solution to this problem, looking at this parking lot and saying, okay, in a parking lot of 60 wheels, I have zero cars, 30 motorcycles. What other solutions could there be though? Because remember in the question you were asked, how many possible solutions are there? So if I had one car, how many wheels do I have? Four. So I have one car, four wheels. How many motorcycles am I gonna have? How many wheels am I gonna have? Well, I know if I have four wheels here, I know I can't have 60 wheels, so then I have 64. So I could say I have 56 wheels, and how many motorcycles am I going to have? Well, what's half of 56? 28. So, you can kind of see, I, I hope that you can kind of see, and I'll, I'll leave this here as an example, that you can go through and hopefully you start to, see a, start to see a pattern through all these numbers, and then you can tell me how many possible solutions you'll have. The other side of this, this is only one way you can do this question. You could also, if you wanted to, you could draw an actual parking lot out and you could start by drawing kind of two wheels and then four wheels. It might take a little bit longer, but you might still see a pattern. So giving you one way to start this is a chart. There might be another way though, where you could draw a picture. I wanna see maybe what way you may solve this question. So please put your answers uh, into a Google Doc. You can submit your answer to me of how many possible solutions you can have to have 60 wheels in the parking lot with how many motorcycles, how many cars. Thank you guys very much. On the other side of this, please, please, please remember to do your knowledge check for Monday because that is due Monday and we will mark it together on Monday just like we did last week. So thank you Gators. Good to see you again and we'll see you next week for our first live Zoom on Tuesday. Bye for now.